welcome you all to this section on fluid mechanics and machinery so this session is also devoted to regarding certain uh, uh, equations and certain understanding regarding the course outcome one so we know very well uh, the previous topic uh, we have discussed about uh, the properties of fluids uh, the mass density like uh, mass density is will be called in such gravity viscosity compressibility right okay so now we will have to find uh, go on going for bernoulli's theorem so continuity equations so that we are going to learn in this section so first one is actually the bernoulli's theorem so what's actually the bernoulli's theorem is actually before we are entering into the bernoulli's theorem so there are i'll be just going on to some motions actually what it is is normally this bernoulli's theorem will be based on uh, certain applications okay a uh, certain assumptions so what are certain assumptions that then only this uh, bernoulli's theorem will be applicable so first one is actually there is no work or heat interaction between the fluid element and the surrounding so there is no work or heat interaction between a element uh, if we are considering any fluid elements and the surrounding should take place shouldn't, shouldn't take place the flow should be incompressible and friction by viscous uh, forces has to be negligible that's very very important so friction has to be negligible and next one is actually another also you can see the flow should be ideal that is the viscosity should be zero so those are certain assumptions the flow should be steady uh, the flow should be irrotational like this we do have certain assumptions based on which uh, bernoulli's theorem is uh, working and this bernoulli's theorem is actually this is the equation and this was uh, developed by daniel bernoulli 1738 so it is uh, named after the scientist as bernoulli's theorem so we have it as p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z is equal to c1 so we have one is actually the pressure term that right? what it is p by rho into g so that will be the flow work per unit mass okay v square by 2g will be the kinetic energy per unit mass and z will be the potential energy per unit mass so c will be your constant so now you are going to apply your bernoulli's theorem so you know very well it will be applicable on uh, regarding this office meter and also venturi meter okay so in office meter venturi meter so this bernoulli's law of uh, theorem is being applied okay so we will be discussing them one by one now so actually first one is your uh, venturi meter so regarding uh, venturi meter we know actually what it is its venturi meter is actually a device used for measuring the rate of flow of a fluid through your pipeline so what will be parts of this uh, venturi meter so it will have a short uh, converging part you will have and you will have a short uh, you will have it as a short uh, throat and also you will have a diverging part okay so that's these are the three so this will be working based on the bernoulli's theorem okay so this will be based on bernoulli's theorem next okay so what is actually this converging zone so what why we are going to have a converging zone the power is the purpose of the converging zone actually so the converging zone is actually is to accelerate the flow and it, it will be creating a pressure difference between the inlet to the converging cone and the throat okay so the angle of diver, diverging cone will be from you can see that the angle will be from 14 degree to 20 degree so that is we are angle um next point is actually it has a very short cylindrical throat so what is the function of uh, throat is actually it is used for stabilizing the flow and it will be facilitating the provision of uh, pressure tapping and also we should know that the diameter of uh, ratio that the diameter should be small d by capital d should be equal to 0.4 to 0.7 where capital d will be the diameter of uh, pipeline and the small d will be the diameter of uh, throat so these are some these are some this is regarding the parts of the venturi meter next one we do have a diverging part of diverging cone what it is actually the diverging cone so you know when you are if it is passing fluid is passing over the diverging section the velocity will be reduced and the pressure will be increased uh, to the original value to the extent to what extent it is possible practically so there will be Uh, regaining of pressure so angle of diverging cone that will be from uh, 5 degree to 7 degree you can see this uh, section actually so figure shows that eventually meter is being inclined in a 
is being inserted in inclined plane uh, to measure the flow rate of the pipe. So, let us consider we are having a sturdy ideal and one dimensional object that is uh, already told you these are some assumptions sturdy ideal and dot. So, under these situations there will be velocity and uh, pressure at any section will be uniform ok. So, and the less, let the velocity and pressure at the inlet section 1 be V1 and P1 and at the throat to the section 2 or V2 and P2. You can see this, please see this. So, I am fixing a manometer here, ok. So, G is a converging zone, I am having a throat. So, there will be direction of flow, you can see that, ok. So, diverging zone, there is a direction of flow and this is Z, is a datum level and delta H you do have, Z2 is the, I am considering two sections, the height of uh, this is Z1 and that is Z2, ok. So, converging cone, uh, the parts are being shown. So, next we will see the equations. Now, I am going to apply Bernoulli's equations in both the sections. We saw the two sections, isn't it? So, P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g plus Z1 is equal to P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g plus Z2. So, what happens? I am taking the velocity side here and the pressure side and the datum heights of, uh, can see the Z2 minus, Z1 minus Z2 I am taking to the right side. We know very well uh, by continuity equations, uh, velocity V2 A2 is equal to V1 A1. So, we will have a1 and a2 are the cross section area. So, I am substituting those values here. So, a2 square by 2g into 1 minus a2 square by a1 square is equal to p1 by rho g plus z1. Okay. I'm, uh, all the p1 uh, regarding this level, I am taking this one p1 by rho g plus z1 minus p2 by rho g plus z2. So, I am considering, I am getting the values for velocity v2. So, actually here I am getting as uh, 1 by uh, root of 1 minus a2 square by a1 square into root of 2g h1 star minus h2 star where the h1 star and h2 stars will be the piezometric pressure heads at the points uh, 1 and 2 respectively. And also h1 star how I am taking this p1 by rho g plus z1 that I am putting uh, I am noting as a term h1 star. h2 stars will be p2 by rho g plus z2. So, q is equal to a2 v2 divided by a2 divided by 1 minus a2 square by a1 square I mean to root of 2g h1 star minus h2 star. So, this is the equation of discharge of flow through venturi meter. So, actual discharge can be calculated by multiplying the theoretical discharge with coefficient of discharge. So, the value of coefficient of discharge will be from 0.91 to 0.99 and it will be depending upon the conditions of flow and losses. So, what are the minutes and demerits actually? So, here in this what happens actually that the recovery of pressure is uh, near the original value. You cannot say it is original, but it will be near the original and loss of energy will be minimum. D minus the cost is very high and it will be occupying, this venture meter will be occupying more space than what is meter. So, where it is used actually? This is used for calculating the flow rate of fluid in a tube and uh, setting of the flow of gasoline in the ignition system. This can be used, okay. You can set the particular velocity rate. In medicinal uh, field also, uh, venturi meter is, can be used to measure the rate of flow, blood flow in the arteries. Thank you for your patient listening and we will see, uh, we'll see you in the next class. Thank you all once again.